Even though I had never actually grown up in India, weirdly enough, I did feel some kind of belonging. Meet Rahul. He is a British citizen who spent his childhood in Singapore, studied in the UK and moved to India last year. Rahul shared why he feels safer in India than in the UK, the reason he believes Indians are the most creative people in the world and why he was shocked by the level of digitalization in India compared to the UK. By Max, let's dive in. Mumbai and Singapore, I wouldn't say like completely opposite, but they're different. I mean, they're Singapore different. is like more structured, Mumbai is more like all over the place, it's like chaotic. Yeah. You prefer being in this environment more or...? They are very different and I, strangely enough, kind of enjoy both of them for yeah. very different reasons. Yeah. I do absolutely love, you know, the food culture in Singapore mm. and, I, and how food is such a big part of how people bond and come together. You know, I, I miss so many dishes. I miss, you know, chicken rice and popia and kuei tiao. And I miss the fact that, you know, things are very convenient in Singapore. You know, getting from A to B is so easy. You know, you just hop on the MRT and yeah. you're there. What I would say about um, India is sort of the chaotic nature of it yeah. also means that it's a very vibrant place. I think what I, what sort of really attracted me to India really is the people. Yeah. Um, the, I think the people really make the place. And even though it may feel like everything is sort of all over the place, I think it's really people that sort of help you out and yeah. help you get things done here. One thing that's sort of similar about Singapore and Mumbai is that I think in both cities, there is a sense of community. Mm. You know, people, there is an informality with how people interact with one another, you know. Mm. For example, in Singapore, you can address people as auntie or uncle, which is such a nice thing. Yeah, it's cool. Um, and that's that's the same here, you know. Taxi driver, you would call you would, in Singapore, you would, you would call uncle. uncle. But in, how is in, here? here, you'd probably you'd say baya, which is like brother. Ah, uh, yeah, like yeah, brother. you'd call them brother. Doesn't um, matter what age. No, it doesn't really matter. I think if they're slightly older, you may you might probably then call them uncle. But I I, I typically call call them baya or bai. One thing that I found was the way that people tend to use social media here is very network driven. Mm. Um, it's very much about connecting with the network. So one thing that I noticed when I did my PhD here was I was specifically working with sort of lower middle class youth from non-English speaking backgrounds, people who had sort of come on the internet for the first time. And I found things that I had never seen growing up in Singapore. Mm. One thing that I noticed, Facebook was really big at the time, and one thing that people did was when they would post pictures of themselves, they'd be tagging 70 or 80 people in the photos. <laughs> and I had never seen this anywhere before. And I found out that the reason for this was actually they were tagging everybody in their wider network because they wanted their photo to be seen. Mm. And they knew that if they tagged these people, those people would like their photo. So it was really a way of sort of extending yourself across the network. It's yeah. perceived as normal. And like. it's perceived as normal, yeah. And I would ask, you know, people, don't you get bothered if you're tagged in a photo that you're not in? And they would say, no, that's, mm. it's completely normal because we know that this person wants likes on their photo and we'll give them a like. There is that very sort of communitarian kind of feeling to to how people operate here. You were saying about the sense of community. So both, I think that's that's what differentiates both Singapore and India versus UK probably. Yes. So UK more yes. individualistic, I think. Yes, yes. I think the UK definitely feels more individualistic. Oh. Um, it's a more kind of individual first society. But what I find in Singapore and especially Mumbai is how sort of people really take um, their relationships with one another very seriously and people yeah. invest time into getting to know one another and networks are a big part of how things operate here. And what I find especially in Mumbai um, since I've moved here, I've noticed how friendly everybody is and how chatty yeah. people are and you know people are very inquisitive. They're, they'll ask you questions about your life, they want to know where you're mm. from, they ask Who's in your family? How many siblings do you have? Where yeah. do you come from? They want to know your life story. For some people that can be a bit disconcerting, but it's something that I, I've, I've come to really like. What is he saying? He's saying, film us, film us. <laughs> I film you. Say hi. <laughs>
<laughs> that shows friendliness of people, right? I know. They are open to, to talk. Very yeah. open, yeah. They're not shy to, to, to chat. No, with you. people are not shy at all. And I think, and that, that sort of that friendliness translates into sort of day to day interaction. So there was actually a, um, a funny story where a friend of mine from the States, he had come mm. to visit me in Mumbai. And we were taking the local train and it's very packed, very crowded. And um, often you have to sort of run onto the train in order to get onto it because it stops for, very, for a very short time. Oh, okay. And what happened was as the train was stopping and going, my friend ran onto the train and then it started going and I hadn't even gotten on the train yet. And so I worried, oh no, I'm, I'm going to lose my friend. And <laughs> I, before I knew it, on the next carriage, somebody was sticking out their hand for me to grab wow. onto and get on the train. And I did and I ran and I grabbed his hand and he let me on and he asked me, you know, are you okay? Where is your friend? Did he manage to get on the train? So, you know, there's a lot of, there is, especially in Mumbai, this sort of spirit of helping one another. And I've noticed here that there is this feeling of, because it's such a chaotic, crazy city, there is a sense that, you know, we're all in this together. And you notice that in sort of the everyday acts of people just helping each other out in small ways. Yeah. Um, that's what I really like about Mumbai. Yeah. Technical question. If you, let's say, meet Indian, so you shake hands, yes. like shake hands is normal. Yes. But then you, do you hug? Or like, what do you do? You don't kiss, right? You don't kiss cheeks. No, but do no. You hug? You, um, I think you would hug them probably if you know them. I think if, if it's if it's someone that you probably haven't met, you would shake hands or you would, you know, you do namaste. Namaste. Um, yeah, that's that that's the traditional sort of mm. greeting. But yeah, once you know someone, yeah, you can absolutely hug them for sure. Do you miss anything from UK, from Singapore, living here? I definitely miss the strong arts culture in the UK. I think one of the things I always enjoy whenever I'm in the UK is, you know, going to the theater or watching a musical or visiting a museum. You know, there is a really rich culture and tradition of the arts, of knowledge in the UK. I really like that. And I know people sort of give British food a bit of a <laughs> bad rap, but I actually, I really like British food. And I actually think London is a phenomenal place for food because you get food from all over the world, you know, whether it's you go to a place like Borough Market or Camden Market, you're getting food from Brazil, Argentina, Mexico, Tibet, you know, everywhere. And here it's mostly like... Here India. it's, yes, here it's, I mean, you do. So with India, I've noticed over the years increasingly you are getting more and more food options that are not just Indian. So now you get, you know, really good cafes and coffee shops. You get great, you know, pizzer pizzerias. You get Mexican food as well. But largely, I think it tends to be food from different parts of India. Mm. What I really miss about Singapore, I do miss the food culture. Absolutely, that's one thing I really miss. I miss so many of the dishes and I miss how big a role food plays in sort of connecting people there. Mm. I miss the greenery of Singapore a lot. I miss places like Botanic Gardens and Bukatima Nature Reserve, where you can just go and walk and just sort of be at one with nature. It's a little harder in a city like Mumbai, but there are places, you know, outside the city where you can really explore nature, mm. which is nice as yeah. well. Where do you feel safer, here or in UK? I would say, actually, I, I think in Mumbai especially, I feel very safe. I've never once felt unsafe in Mumbai. Actually once, I remember it was late at night and I was coming home, but I was completely lost and I didn't know the way back. And actually what happened was an auto driver found me and he saw that I was alone and completely lost. And he asked me, you know, where are you going? And I told him mm. and he said, okay, come, I'll take you. And he dropped me home and when I got home, and I tried to pay him, he wouldn't even take any money. He said, no, please. What do you think UK can learn from India? I think definitely there's a kind of sort of resourcefulness to people here that I think the UK can learn. I think people here are so inventive in getting in the way that 
they get things done. There's a term here that's very popular called jugad, which sort of means being resourceful or inventive. And often that's sort of how things happen here. It's never through the way that you expect. And it means that you do have to be a little bit flexible. You do have to be patient, but things will, will happen if you mm. trust people's resourcefulness. Yeah. Um, people find a way to get things done. I'll give you a, a really good example of Jagat, which I saw. I remember I saw someone on his motorbike, he had set up a makeshift tea stall. So literally on the seat of his bike, he had a box with flasks selling tea yeah. and biscuits and paper cups and operating from literally just his motorbike, he was <laughs> selling chai. And that's a really kind of great example of how sort of people sort of make things happen here. Even if it seems like something's impossible, somehow or another, people here will find a way of, of making it happen. And what I think the UK could maybe learn is just, I think, or especially London, is, is that sense of community, mm. is that openness to other people. Because, you know, sometimes you go on the tube in London and, you know, everyone's sort of kind of keeping to themselves and you feel like you can't, you know, maybe start a conversation. When I'm here, I feel very comfortable just talking to people, mm. even if I don't know them, even if I, even if I may have no connection to them at all. If you show an interest in someone and their story and their life, people get excited and they, they like to, to know about you and talk and connect. Another thing that I've noticed in India is how sort of digitally forward it is as a country, mm, mm. Um, which sort of shocked me when I first came here. So for example, since I've moved to India, I've barely used cash. And that's because UPI payments is, has almost become the norm, you know? You go to a chaiwala or you go to you know, your barber and they'll all have you know, a QR code that you can scan and you pay them, which is phenomenal. One thing that I've, another thing I've noticed in India is sort of how the mobile phone is so important to getting anything done. You know, there's apps for everything, whether it's, you know, booking an auto rickshaw to hiring a plumber or an electrician or even a barber to come home. There are apps for that. So everything happens on the mobile phone. And another thing that's really big in India is WhatsApp. Mm. Everything happens on WhatsApp. One of the things in India is that I think the lines between the personal and the professional are very blurred here. And it means that to get anything done, you have to use WhatsApp, whether that's to text someone, uh, to get something done. When you're working with clients, often you'll be messaging them on WhatsApp and sharing updates. Um, and that was a big difference coming from the UK, where your personal life is WhatsApp and your professional life happens over email. In India, I think it's very different. I think everything sort of bleeds in together. When you moved to India from UK, what was your feelings? Did you feel like home? So you kind of discovered your home from your ancestors? Or like, did you feel more like foreigner from Britain or like from Singapore? Or kind of, oh, that's my home. So, what's, so even though I had never actually grown up in India, weirdly enough, I did feel some kind of belonging when I came here. I think that's partly because of the fact that people are so inviting here, mm. you know? They, they really sort of welcome you into the community and the amount of times that I've been invited to people's homes is such a nice thing. So I, I did sort of feel in many ways that even though it was a country that I haven't really spent a lot of time in, I did kind of feel in a way that it, that it was home. Okay, another interesting story that sort of contributed to that feeling. When I first started visiting India uh, while I was working in Singapore, I was working at the National University of Singapore. Okay. And my first assignment was to go to a city called Patna, which is sort of located, it's in the east of India, it's sort of near the heartlands. And Patna has a bit of a reputation of being a bit of a dangerous okay. city. So I remember people in my office in Singapore were a little bit worried about me. They said, you know, Rahul, when you go there, be careful. Don't talk to strangers, don't go out at night. And I thought, you know, I, I didn't know what to expect, but I have to say, Max, when I went there, I've never met such friendly people mm. in my life. 
Um, people were so kind, so warm. And in fact, you know, I was in Patna for just one week and I ended up making a friend there. And the next thing you know, Several months later, I'm back in Patna, not for work, but to attend oh. my new friend's wedding. Oh, okay. Yeah, he, wow. he, he, after I left Patna, he kept messaging me saying, you must come to my wedding, you must come. Oh, wow. And it was such a, you know, beautiful gesture. And, um, and I think that's one thing I've noticed in India, sort of your relationships and friendships with people, they form very fast. Mm. Um, you know, I think, especially in the UK, sort of people tend to be a little bit more reserved, um, especially in London. But in India, you know, just after one conversation, people immediately sort of feel comfortable around you and they'll invite you into their homes and they'll, you know, sort of feeding people is a big part of, of Indian culture. And there's a saying here that, you know, um, guest is God. One thing that actually sort of took me up by surprise when I, uh, started coming to India more is uh, when you go to restaurants what you'll notice is that waiters won't just serve you the dish but they'll often serve you the portion on your plate so they'll actually serve you the mm. food on your plate which is again it's like it's almost like when you're going like to someone's home. home and they yeah. serve you it's so that that sort of that culture of of really treating a guest like they're a god that seeps into to everything here. And the weddings are crazy in India. The weddings are yes. absolutely crazy. Yeah. They last for days. Um, there's many different events. Weddings here are definitely a celebration. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. And about like so many people normally invited. And yeah? Yes. Um, I remember when I went for my friend's wedding in Patna, I think there were thousands of, thousands of people there. Um, he had invited people from across the city. What's the difference, Bangalore and Mumbai? I think Bangalore is probably a little bit more laid back in terms of its culture. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, Mumbai is definitely far more fast paced and you'll notice that um, go to any train station in Mumbai and just observe the speed at which people walk. Mm. I know that Singapore is known to have uh, people who walk very fast, but I've not seen anything like in Mumbai. People walk at an incredibly fast pace. Um, you actually walk very fast when I meet you and we, <laughs> we found out that we go for find another yeah. cafe and it was, it was like... Yeah, like, maybe, okay. maybe Mumbai is uh, sort of, that spirit is seeping into me. Things are very fast paced here. People lead incredibly fast lives. Um, but despite that, there is such a friendliness and warmth and openness here for yeah. people, which is nice. And Bangalore is more... <laughs> Bangalore less, is... Less cosmopolitan? No, Bangalore is also cosmo quite cosmopolitan because of um, the tech industry that's there. So you do get people coming from um, all over India. But for example, the food culture in Bangalore, for example, is very different. Because it's in the south of India, the kinds of foods that you will find in Bangalore will be things like dosa and idli, um, yeah, exactly, which yeah. you can get here, but it's not the same. So that's another difference. And Bangalore is sort of known to be the garden city of India. So it's very green. A little mm. bit in some, some ways did remind me a bit of Singapore actually, mm. um, the greenery. Uh, Mumbai is a bit more of a concrete jungle. What's a nice thing about Mumbai is that it has the sea, mm. which is beautiful. So you'll, you'll often find at any time of day, if you go to the beach or if you go to um, Marine Drive, you'll just see people sitting there enjoying watching the ocean. So we are right now in Versova Beach. It's one of my favorite spots in Mumbai. Whenever I want to sort of get away from the chaos, I come here and sort of everything just slows down. So Versova um, is known because I think a lot of people in the creative industry here, you know, yeah. a lot of writers, producers, filmmakers, actors, a lot of them live in this area and, and very west. There are times where I've actually seen the water is actually all the way up till here. Mm. So there are times where it's actually the water comes in really high. It's really nice around when the sun is setting around 6 p.m. Uh. It's beautiful. And you'll, there'll be many more people coming here and just sitting. You're right. Music, like, can you talk about it? What, what, what do you do? Yes. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a singer songwriter um, and I actually sort of grew up in Singapore writing songs and performing um, kind of around the country. Mumbai has a thriving uh, music scene and there 
I mean, it is largely an industry here that is sort of dictated by Bollywood. I've sort of been following the independent music scene for quite a few years. I actually shot a music video here with a wonderful team. And I guess like to shoot a like, music video here is cheaper than let's say in the UK or in Singapore. Yes, yes, it is, it is for sure. Um, I think generally in India, um, the cost of labor is cheaper. It's relatively easy to be able to afford whether it's a domestic helper or whether it's a cook, but just even working with sort of creative people here, people have so many ideas and people are so talented. And um, you know, the process of actually creating a music video here was so interesting because it was very different from Singapore. Mm. In Singapore, th things are very sort of meticulously planned, very organized and very ordered. In India, when I shot my music video here, I initially wasn't really sure, you know, what was going on. But it, when it does happen, as many things happen in India, they come together beautifully at the end. Mm. Um, and it, it, it may seem like there is sort of a chaos, but there is, there is a method to the madness. Oh, you are so sweet. Thanks for watching the next video. Yeah, right here, this one. Thank you again and see you there.